A New Day with Dr. Tammy Bradshaw-Scott, a program dedicated to addressing current issues and offering solutions and hope for each new day. Dr. Tammy is a registered psychologist and licensed marriage and family therapist with degrees in clinical psychology. And now, here is your host for A New Day, Dr. Tammy. and a special warm welcome to those of you at home. We have a remarkable program for you today, a topic that is difficult to discuss, but one that we must talk about. The loss of a loved one by suicide is one of the most painful experiences that one can go through, especially when it is your child who takes their own life. We need to have this conversation if we want to provide hope and healing to those who have lost a loved one to suicide. And we, in our communities, need to know what we can do to help prevent future suicides. According to the American Foundation for Suicide, each year, 42,773 Americans die by suicide. And for every suicide, there are 25 attempts. And according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, suicide is the second leading cause of death for young people ages 10 to 24 and is also the second leading cause of death for adults ages 25 to 34. These are staggering numbers. Today we will hear from a mother who lost her daughter to suicide. She is here to bravely share her story and to help shed light on this problem. And she offers a message of hope for those who have lost a child or may be hurting from the loss of a child or loved one by suicide, or perhaps you know someone today who is suffering such a loss. How might we offer some help and hope? Our guest today has some powerful insights. So please join me in welcoming Diana Handy. Like hey. ebony and ivory. Hey, hey, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. Thank you. Thank you so much, Diane, for joining us today. I know this is a, a difficult topic and a very painful one for you and for myself as well. Yes. Um, but I would like our viewers to get to know your daughter um, and would like to take uh, some moments here and have you share, introduce her to us, uh, if you wouldn't mind. Okay. My daughter is, um, well, hello, everyone. Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. My daughter's name is Diagene Cecile Lauren Handy, and she would be 24 years old. Her birthday is March 30th. Um, she was a very beautiful young lady, inside and out, from birth to death, and, but she didn't see that. She couldn't see that at all. She thought she was fat and ugly. Um, she was very funny. She liked to pull practical jokes on us. She really liked to get my mom, Madeline Handy. They, used to, they call her Jima, but she would call her on the phone using all these different accents. She would talk to her in Spanish and heavy Scottish brogue Chinese and just get a kick out of my mom trying to tell this person on the other line, I don't understand what you're saying. I don't speak this language. And when my mom would realize it was dying. She'd be like, girl, if you don't stop messing with me and slam the phone down. And she, was, she really liked uh, to laugh. She really liked to laugh a lot. So it's very confusing. But uh, she was a great big sister. Uh, her and her little brother Burrell would sing whole Disney musicals from uh, note by note, dance them step by step, do the whole entire dialogues of every character in the movie from the time they were four and two. Uh, you just watching them play together, they, they never once fought, not one fight. I fought with my brother. I know other people who don't get along, you know, my sisters and whatever. They never had one fight, not one argument, not one unkind word. 
Not until the night she hung herself. She lost it, and she challenged him, and she verbally abused him, and she hit him. I just, it was so out of character for her. Um, it was so out of character. She was 18 at the time, he was 16. And their little brother Isaac was eight. And, um, but anyway, they were so amazing together. And then Isaac came, our little bundle of joy. <laughs> and uh, she was really caring with him. He knew she loved him. He would read to her, hold him, sing with him, play, laugh and joke. Um, she, was, she was so talented. Uh, at eight months, she learned to walk. She was walking. I was running after her. <laughs> Uh, it's like, don't ask for your children to learn to walk. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh. And then uh, at 13 months, she was potty trained. Parents in here understand that's yes. And uh, she, she was a Girl Scout. She uh, played basketball. She had a mean three-pointer. She played volleyball. Uh, she was in choirs. She did musicals. I, I thought at times she was stunningly beautiful. Really, stunningly beautiful and she couldn't see it. She just couldn't see it. Uh, what else? Oh, straight A student. Even through the struggles of going in and out of the uh, behavioral center, um, doing daily six to eight weeks of uh, teen therapy and group therapy, she maintained her grades. I guess that was part of just I don't know, having control. She suffered from eating disorders, uh, anorexia, bulimia. I could always tell after I figured out what was going on, where she was in her uh, troubles by how she looked, if she was looking thin, if she was you know, gaining weight or not. And uh, I noticed she was, she was very sensitive and I think um, we should pay attention to that in our kids. Um, I remember her going uh, to, with her grandparents from Colorado. They came and picked up Diane Burrell. I think she was about seven. And they left, and they took them on a nice little cross-country thing. They went to Vegas, and they hit all those wonderful all-you-can-eat buffets and, you know, circus, circus. And, by the time she got to Colorado to her, her dad, um, she had gained weight, I guess, because I sent them with all new clothes and you know, looking spiffy for their little vacation. And uh, he made a comment to her, like, why would your mother send you with these clothes? You're too big for them. And she actually, after, I think they stayed there maybe three weeks or so, and she gets back home and Almost, not, maybe not the first thing she said, but she says to me, Mommy, why, did you, why didn't you send me bigger clothes? Daddy said it was too big. Mm. And I'm like, I was like, oh, honey, you, I, you guys were eating all you can eat buffet. I'm sorry. You know, I, was <laughs> like, I, I was like, I'm sorry. But uh, maybe then, maybe at that moment, I was just thinking that, that it clicked. You know, that she wasn't the right size. So I think we should be really careful about, you know, oh, you're getting so big when you're talking to the kids. Oh, you're growing up. Yeah. You're so much taller. You look so mature. How handsome you are, as opposed to, you know, you're big, that's too small for you. I don't know when it clicks in and starts registering. Mm -hmm. That's Daya. She was great. <laughs> she was great. The day or the evening prior to her uh, killing herself, we were sitting at the table. It was my birthday. And, um, excuse me, we had just had, I think, cake and ice cream or something. And she goes, what you gonna do? You gonna go out and party and get your freak on? <laughs> I was like, excuse me, excuse me? I don't get no freak on, what you talking about? You know. She was like, well, I was like, no. And I was like, are you kidding? You would have a, you have a fit if anybody even talks to me. She goes, I don't care about that anymore. Oh. I was like, I was like, really? Hmm. 
still ain't getting my freak on. But, you know, <laughs> it was like, where did that come from? You know, and then um, that evening in the shuffle with the, her hitting Burrell and him taking off into the night with no shoes and crying, you know, and, and her coming over crying and, and mad because uh, I was asleep on my parents' couch. We live next door. And it was uh, like 12, 30, 1 o'clock in the morning, and her leaving out saying, and he's gone. I don't know where he is. He took off. And her last words were, and I'm sorry, this is happening on your birthday. Now, oftentimes, and we'll be sharing you know, with our audience about warning signs, um, things that we can pay attention to, and I appreciate you sharing about her, you know, the eating disorder and those things, and us being sensitive to the things that we say. Um, you know, we have warning signs, and then sometimes there are none, mm. and our young people can, uh, you know, do this in a very quick moment. Can oh. you share with us? So they had the argument, um, and, and what happened to, you know, um, as much as you're comfortable sharing about that evening? Um, they, uh, she apparently lost it over at the house. She didn't have a key to, she didn't have keys anymore, I had taken them. And I really had been meaning to give them back to her, but she had one night started to, I don't know, leave out the window or something. She was having like an episode. And so I took the keys so she couldn't just come and go. And um, she wanted to come over to my parents' house to get her contact lenses. And Burrell, she woke him up and he was like, why don't you have a key in the first place? It was kind of a sarcastic mm -hmm. type thing and she was, and. She got mad and she was like, just give me the key and literally started biting him. She went and got one of those heavy flashlights and was threatening him like, I could kill you with this. I could, I could kill you. She turned on every radio, every TV to the loudest level. She was like, if I can't go to sleep, you're not going to sleep is what he said happened. And then she literally, uh, I believe she slapped him with all she had. And he took off into the night. She came over ringing the bell. She rang the bell. And she was like, bro, and I couldn't come over here and get my contacts. And I was like, you rang the doorbell, you're in. It's OK. And she grabbed her contacts. And then she, as she's leaving, I'm like, it's, it's OK, Di. You got your contacts. You've got them. And she was like, no, and, and Burrell's gone. And I don't know where he is. And I was like, what do you mean he's gone? Well, he's gone. And, and I'm sorry this is happening on your birthday. And out the door she went. I get on the phone immediately trying to find Burrell. I started texting him, answer this bleep phone. You know, <laughs> answer me. And yes. finally he did. And, and he's just hysterical. He's, he's crying, he's hysterical. I can barely understand him. I'm like, what is wrong? Where are you? And he's like, I don't, I don't know. And I'm like, come on now, you live in Redlands. It's only, where are you? And he said, just a minute. And I guess he ran a little further. He was down on the corner of Dearborn and Lagonia from our house. We're close to like Citrus, the 7-Eleven thing. And, and I'm like, and then all of a sudden he's talking. And I'm like, who is that? Who's talking to you? And he's like, this woman just stopped and gave me a water. And I'm like, don't move. Stay on the phone. And I get to him. And he goes for the back seat, for the back door. And I'm like, what are you doing? Come in the Come up front. And he gets in the car and he's like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mom. I was like, it's not you. And I'm not going to tell you it's going to be OK. But we're going to go check on Daya. We're going to work this out. We're going to try and figure something out. And he's still crying. He's like, don't take me home. Don't take me home. She's crazy. Don't, she flipped. Don't take me home. And I was like, you're going to go to Mom's. You can sleep in the sewing room. She won't even know you're there. So I get him to, you know, he was, he was like, don't bring me. And we get out of the car, and we go in the house, and I get him some water, and we're sitting on the couch. And I'm like, um, let me go check Daya. Let me go give her her meds. And I get up, and I go in the house. The house is pitch, pitch black, not a light on. And I'm calling for her. And sometimes when um, she would get upset, or she wouldn't answer, you know, how our children are. And I was like, answer me. You know, and I go in her bedroom, and she's not in there. And I'm like, I call her number, and I know she didn't have a 
a lot of minutes on her phone, but I call it and I hear it ring. And so I thought I heard it in the back, so then I went back to her room and I looked on the other side of her bed in case she was hiding down on the floor and she wasn't. And I called it again and as I'm walking out of her room, I hear it in the garage. And I, I open that door and, and she's so low to me that I think she's actually standing there. And I, uh, I put my hand on her shoulder and that's when she swung away from me. And I could see her tongue was protruding and she was, you know, slightly off color. And I grab her by her legs. I try and I'm trying to lift her and she's sliding. She's got one of those uh, orange, thick orange extension cords for uh, lawn work, I guess, one of those wrapped around the beam and I'm trying to lift her and she kind of keeps slipping and I'm trying to call 911 with my phone and I'm talking to, you know, whoever answered me, the dispatcher and I'm, and I'm calling Daya's name, Daya, and, and, and uh, I'm, at the, I'm doing all this at the same time. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm trying to get the cord from off her neck, but she had looped it to where the, uh, the double socket part was there. So I couldn't get it. And I'm, uh, so I kind of let go of her and I run to the kitchen and I get a knife and I just one swipe and it just, it just sliced right through it and she just slumped. She didn't fall, she like just slumped into me and to the ground. And I was doing CPR and I'm talking to, you know, the dispatcher and they came really fast. They came really fast and, um, and while I was doing CPR, they get in there and, and it's, she's half in and half out of the garage door. And, they're, uh, and I just asked them, do they make sounds? Because she was, there were sounds. Um, I, I don't know if we call it breathing, but there were sounds. And um, he was like, yes, they do. And then they carried her to the living room. And um, I, was, I called my mom and Burrell answered. And I'm like, put mom on. And he's like, what's wrong? And I was like, just put her on. And he's like, what is it? And I'm like, put mom on. And I told her, in the meantime, he has walked over and our doors can open up double. And the, uh, they were you know, working on her right there in the uh, living room. They had kind of stripped her down a little. And he walks in the door and I see him. Oh, I'm calling, I'm on the phone with my brother. They live in Arizona. They were actually on their way out because Isaac was making his first communion Saturday. So they were coming out for that. And they'd already started packing and stuff and, and I'm, we're praying, the Our Father, he's praying with me and I see Burrell out of the corner of my eye and I'm like, don't let him see. And it was too late and he's screaming. He goes out in the yard and he just falls and he's just screaming and they take her and then, then the police, oh my gosh, because it's a suicide, you know, and they had to make sure we hadn't done anything to her. So they um, take us over to my mom's and um, they're loading Di up and they're asking Burrell all these questions and what happened and where were you and what were you doing and we're sitting here and all I want to do is be over there at the ambulance <laughs> but they wouldn't let us go he just kept asking all these questions and then they um, told us to follow them to the hospital and I know Redlands like the back of my hand and anybody who knows me knows I can get across it in about four minutes yeah. so I was highly upset Following them, you know, they took me all through downtown, all the way around to like Terracina, and Terracina, and I'm like, why aren't you like just breaking away from these people? You know, but we followed them, and when we got there to the hospital, the doctor told uh, told me that they couldn't save her, mm -hmm. and um, so I uh, we went. They told us we could go in the room. And so we did, and she just looked like she was sleeping. Thank you so much for sharing your story and oh, you. helping so many people uh, to understand, first of all, the beautiful young lady, your daughter,
to know this you know, young lady and to know of your pain and the tragedy. But what would you say was most helpful? Because there are so many other families out there, as your family, my family. Um, what is most helpful for us to know, to be able to come alongside you in that time? In just a couple of short sentences. I, I would say, my, my first thing I would say to people is do not ask why. What's the point? You're not going to get an answer. You're not going to get the answer from the, the person who can give you that answer is dead and gone. And so to torture yourself, why? I went home to that garage and I asked God, I opened that door and I said, God, please do not let me ask why ever. And please do not let me see what I saw the way I saw it ever again. So I can see Daya right now. I can see that cord, I can see her, but it's, uh, I'm sad, but it, it's not that shocking, ugh, disgusting sight that I saw then. Um, I would not let people isolate. Some people, we all grieve different, so this yes. is really tricky. Yes. Some people shut down. Uh, I would do my best not to let my friends or family members isolate themselves. And I would, um, I would try to, uh, uh, we, we can learn that um, we can have new family traditions. Um, the boys and I, we would have all these birthday parties and stuff and do things, but we did not stay home that first, Daya's first birthday after she was gone, or Christmas. I think we, we went to an amusement park, something we wouldn't have done. So we changing. went to the movies. We started new memories, okay. new memories. I would also, we have pictures on the wall of Daya. Daya is everywhere. I is part of our family. Mm -hmm. I could not. That, I think within the first week or two, her room was cleaned out. My friends thought I was crazy, but I was like, bag it up. What do you want me to do with it? Throw it away. Give it away. What, what are we going to do with it? They're like, you sure you don't want to keep something? I was like, Morel, Isaac, you want something? Do you want something? They took what they wanted. I was like, no, I just could not see myself coming through the door every day, going into this room mm -hmm. that just is not being used, with just everything still the same, collecting dust. I don't like to clean as it is, so why am I going <laughs> to dust a room that ain't even being used? I don't know. I was just like... So, Diana, in our, um, as you have done a lot of um, grieving over these years and um, healing and what would you like to say to the audience in our last um, minute here in terms of how we can help prevent, you know, or help those who are suffering the pain that you and I have been through? Okay, well, I'm going to start with, um, I teach high school and in the last two years we've had three suicides. Uh, and a couple of months ago, we had a teacher in our school district who committed suicide. In Redlands, a few months ago, we had four suicides in two days. So it's happening all the time. We've got to teach our students, you know, uh, give them hotline numbers, magnets on the refrigerator, stick them in our syllabi at the beginning of the school year for parents as well. We have to praise our teens and we have to encourage them and uplift them. Um, we need to let them know, I tell my students how sad and lonely I would be if they killed themselves, how much I would miss them and that I love them. And to please call me, call me if you are planning to kill yourself. You know, I'm going to try and talk you out of it, but at least give me the chance to say goodbye. To say goodbye to you. And I think we need to, there's a problem going on. We need to teach everyone, but mainly start with our kids, problem-solving skills, conflict resolution daily. I don't even understand what's going on in the world today. But we need to teach that to them so that their mind immediately goes to, how am I going to work this out? Instead of, how am I going to end this? Love yourselves like your life depends on it, because it does. Thank so you. teach our kids. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. 
as we have heard from Diana today, our hearts absolutely break for her and her family. But unfortunately and tragically, Diana and her family represents thousands of families. But there is hope. We can help those who have been affected by suicide to heal, and we together can help prevent future suicide for our young people and adults. If you know someone, or if you are that someone who has lost a loved one, a child or a loved one to suicide, there are healing resources and people who can help. Listed on your screen are some excellent resources. The National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, the National Institute for Mental Health, and the Suicide Prevention Resource Center. These resources also provide risk factors and warning signs of suicide. The more we are aware of the risk factors, and the warning signs, the more helpful we can become at preventing suicide from happening to families like Diana's. I want to thank Diana for her courage today, for sharing with us, and my many thanks to all of you for joining us today here on A New Day. Thank you. This viewer-supported program is made possible by viewers like you. Your support is invaluable and appreciated. To send a gift or for more information, please contact Dr. Tammy at the address on your screen. And thank you for joining us for A New Day.